大家好，欢迎来到陶溪专景的镇国际工作室举办的线上讲座，我是大家的主持人及翻译李芷君。陶溪专国际教育目前上线了一系列国际大师班视频课程，还将邀请国内外艺术家定期举办艺术讲座，请大家持续关注。大家听得清我说话吗？清楚的话，请在公屏上扣一，因为线上讲座用的是跨国网络。所以可能会出现信号不稳定的情况，请大家见谅。讲座过程中如果有任何问题，也可以打在评论区里，我们的工作人员会为大家解答。一切正常的话，我们的讲座就正式开始了。今晚参与讲座分享的艺术家是来自美国的艺术家 Chase Gamblin。Chase Gamblin 是美国印第安纳大学陶艺专业教授。今晚讲座的主题是堆叠情绪。Gamblin 将介绍泥浆装饰和配置的技法，强调作品展示中光影的重要性。同时 ，Gamblin 的线上课程《堆叠成器》已经上架售卖，相关课程链接请大家在公屏查看。Welcome to the online lecture held by Tao Sichuan Art Center. Today, we're very honored to have invited Chase Gamblin as our lecturer. He is a faculty member as the academic specialist and ceramic area coordinator at Indian, Indiana University in Bloomington. The title of today's lecture is "Stacked and Slipped." We have also invited him to film this masterclass series, also called "Stacked and Slipped." You can find it on sale today on our platform. Please check our website if you have an interest. Now let's welcome Professor Chase Gamblin to have his speech. Thank you so much. All right, can everyone? Can you see my screen here? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So、um, first, I want to start off and and thank you for your introduction and thank the Tashi Chuan Art Center for inviting me to be a part of this project. I also want to thank Sinying Ho for. Uh, always supporting me over the past maybe six, seven years, and、uh, and connecting me with this. And I want to thank everyone that was able to show up for this lecture tonight. So thank you all.、Um, this first image <clears throat> that I'm showing, it is the piece on the left and the piece on the right are the two vessels that I create in my master class series, and so. Uh, I wanted to start off by showing these two images to see where we will end up in this lecture and in that video series.、Um, before we, sorry, you can. No, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, before I get to these, the details of these two pieces,、um, I'll, I'll start in my next image. I'll start off、uh, telling you about the process. But sorry, you can go ahead. OK， 嗯、呃，首先感谢大家收听今晚的讲座，感谢陶西川邀请我来拍摄嗯大师班课程和今晚的讲座分享，嗯，我还要感谢何善颖老师一直以来对我的支持，嗯，所以感谢所有人，嗯，在讲座开始之前，我想为大家介绍一下这张图中的。嗯、呃，左右两张图分别是我在线上大师班课程中创作的两幅作品。在课程中，我将介绍完整的创作流程。Okay, so I want to start and sort of tell you all about the sort of journey of where, how I got to the work that I make now with the stacking and slipping. And I start off with this image because、um, this piece on the left is a very early、uh, piece of mine. It is not stacked or slipped, but I show this image to show, like everyone、um, in ceramics, we start somewhere in trying to find our own sort of style and technique and our own voice in clay. And so, this piece is、uh, a cone tin fired. In reduction kiln, so it, it just shows that I was sort of learning all the basic techniques of throwing. And the image on the right is my very first、uh, iteration of a stacked form, where I took two cylinders and I stacked them on top of each other 
and then I threw that to be, uh, so that I could make a much taller form. That's not the process that I use currently, but I introduced that in this lecture to show you kind of where it started. 首先，我想介绍一下我在堆叠造型，嗯，创作堆叠造型过程中的嗯感悟。嗯，左边的这幅作品呢，是我在本期本科时期创作的早期作品之一。那个时候，我专注于研究陶艺技法，并且试图找到属于我自己的艺术风格。左边的这幅作品是我在十号追温下用还原烧制，嗯。得到的作品，其中使用了铜红釉和很多其他的基础技法。而右边的这张照片呢，拍摄于二零零四年，当时我正在尝试拉至尺寸更大的作品。我将两个组件拼接在一起，使作品的尺寸变得更大。这张这这张照片记录了我选用拼接造型创作大型作品的初心。In this next image, similar to that image that I showed you on the left before, none of these are stacked or slipped. But I, I just wanted to expand on when I was trying to develop my skills as an artist, making different pots, different shapes, learning、um, different firing techniques and glazing techniques. So I was, I found an interest in this top left image. You can see ash glaze on the surface. I had a strong interest in this ash glaze, as well as on the right, I, I developed a strong interest in this copper red. And this bottom left image of set of bottles was the very first wood firing that I ever did, which、um, you'll see in the future where I spend many years wood firing. And、um, this teapot was in an atmospheric salt firing, and、um, again, this is sort of to reiterate. I'm searching to try to find something that I、um, maybe am drawn to, other than the basic process of throwing. Um, 接下来的这一个时期，我在呃寻找自己的创作风格，不断的尝试和探索不同的烧制技法，嗯、呃，和不同的陶艺技法，做。左上角的这张图片中，我使用了灰釉。嗯，我开始对这种灯泡型的器型产生了兴趣，而不同的区域区域间的釉料有着鲜明的界限。右上角的红铜作品，釉面很干净，有着清晰的区域划分。左下角的瓶状作品是我拉制的第一组系列作品，它们是在柴窑中烧制的。这组造。这组造型非常重要，因为在那之后的很长时间，我都延续了这一系列的柴烧风格。嗯，这些作品见证了我在创作风格上的摸索。右下角的茶壶是在汽窑中烧制的，茶壶上装饰了用黄铜和木材制成的把手。In my, in between my second and third year of undergraduate school, I had thrown a bunch of pots in my studio, and to make space in my studio, I began stacking them、um, as finished pieces, stacking them up in the corner to make room. And I liked the forms that were made with just simply stacking up those pots. So.、Um, This was the first iteration of sort of stacking and and, and connecting these pieces、um, that I developed. And so what I had done, you can see here, where I've all three of these pieces. I kind of start with a a basic kind of bowl, a flared out bowl shape, and then I threw a body form. It was essentially another bowl, turn it upside down, and I attach those, and then I、um, threw a third section. That I stacked as well. So I, I liked seeing the separation. I liked seeing the gap here between the bowl and the body. And these are one piece; they don't separate. I like seeing that、um, contrast between the upper and lower sections, still playing with the copper reds and ash glazes,、um, and keeping sharp separating lines. 
to, to, uh, to sort of show that contrast between form and glaze and color. 前几张照片是我早期风格摸索时创作的作品我很喜欢他们表面这种明显的拼接痕迹，没有任何隐藏。我很喜欢流动的灰釉与均匀的铜红釉的效果对比。After that, I, I um I found this piece on the left, this jug here made by Matt Long. I found it so inspiring, and I was influenced. Um, so strongly with the surfaces of his work, with that thick, luscious um, slip that he puts on the surface, and then he fires them in a soda kiln. And I, I was so drawn toward them that I, I reached out to him to find out um, how I could possibly do that same thing. And so this piece on the right was sort of my take on his technique. And so I made a slip out of the clay body that I was using, attached it, slathered it on the surface so I could get these big drooping um, movement lines that are very similar to his. Um, and another thing that um, you'll see that's different from the last piece is I am doing some uh, wood firing as well as the bowl down here. The difference between this and the last image, you'll see that I, I took and sort of cut in um, altered the lip of that bowl so it's not so clean and crisp. I wanted this this line to sort of mimic the movement of the slip. Uh, 嗯制作出嗯如图所示的表面效果 这幅作品的形状像泪滴，它的底部拼接了一只浅碗造型的底座，而底座的边缘不再是干净平滑的曲线，而是模拟了泥浆的流动。它的线条与表面流动的泥泥浆相互映衬。大家可以看到这两幅
在这一时期，我遇到了一位澳大利亚的艺术家 Peter Rose。嗯、um, ，我与他合作了两年的时间。嗯、um, ，左边的这张照片呢，是他在柴窑中拍摄的照片，而右边这一张是他本人的作品。再右边的两张照片是我与他一起合作创作的作品。嗯、um, ，他们与刚才我展示的作品风格很相近。我拉出了两个部分，底部前碗造型的口沿部分经过切割，来模拟泥浆的动态曲线。而最右边这幅名为《火焰》的作品中，大家能看到窑内气氛为泥浆表面带来的效果。它们没有上釉，只是窑中的柴灰融化，产生了一些光泽的釉面。Um. Toward the end of my undergrad, undergraduate school, I I I noted this is this is sort of one of the last pieces that I made in undergrad, and it was influenced by this image of Don Wright's working in his studio, and I would walk by this poster every day in the studio and see this same image. That's why it's so grainy and old looking,、um, and I love. That again, I had not noticed it, but it, he was using this sort of stacked method in a different way than I was before. Before I was doing sort of a bowl, shallow bowl form. I was throwing a piece and setting it inside and connecting it to that bowl form.、And、here, you know, he was throwing this under portion and then attaching this overhung skirted portion. And so this piece on the left was my version. Of that、uh, inspiration, so I had thrown this、um, under base form to give lift to this upper skirted dress type form. I liked this overhung negative space and how it not only created a contrast between the base and this top form, but it allowed a a bigger canvas for me to、uh, put slip on. I like the shadow that was being cast down here from the light. Uh, 接在接近本科时期尾声的时候，我受到了一位叫做 Don Waits 的艺术家的影响。这右边的这张照片是在我学校里张贴的一张海报。我当时每天都会经过这张海报。呃、uh, ，我很喜欢这幅作品的大小。以及他垂悬的不如均匀的裙边，它是由底座、裙边和上方的圆柱体等三个部分组成的。左边的这幅作品是我受到他的启发创作的作品。我拉制了一些碗状的造型和主体的部分，再将它们拼接在一起。这是我第一次尝试使用垂悬的裙边。这幅作品的尺寸很大。因此，涂式泥浆时候也更加的时候也更加自由，但是它依然是柴窑烧制的，窑内的气氛和柴灰产生了泥浆表面的效果。我很喜欢柴窑烧制下泥浆表面产生的层次感和阴影。Sorry, I'm gonna have to close this out and reshare. Okay. So I'd finished my undergraduate degree and I graduated, and I went on to graduate school here. And this,、um, what I realized in my undergrad is that、um, my undergrad focused on traditional, formal、um, uh, uh, techniques in history and very traditional techniques in making pots. And when I went to graduate school, they were challenging me in new ways, challenging me conceptually to find out sort of what is important to me, not just in making pots, but sort of what is important. So、uh, I was challenged on ideas of why making pots in general is utility important. Why do you want to make? You know, why do you want to use clay? And so,、uh, these things are, are 
um, asked in a lot of places, but this um, in a lot of school settings. But I found uh, this is where I was able to focus and hone in on those things. And so, with that being said, this image on the top right and the bottom right, these three uh, base forms in this bottom uh, left, I didn't use slip, and they are not thrown and stacked. Um, but I was trying. I was challenged on the, on the idea of how to make uh, pots seem more important, quote unquote. So I was trying to figure out how to do that. And what I had done, my initial response was to give these pots their own space, their own sort of base form, something for them to live in, to elevate them, so to speak. And all of these three pieces are, are very uh, traditional techniques. And this is a cone tin reduction uh, with a celadon glaze on top. And down here, these are both comb tin reduction fired with chinos. All three of these pieces were um, um, were very small. They're about three to four inches tall. The only piece that I had used slip in stacking was this teapot up on the top left. Now this is two pieces. There's a there is a shallow bowl form underneath, in this upper body skirted form on top, in which I added slip and then I soda fired. And this is the first um, stacked teapot that I had made. Um,在我本科时期结束之后,我开始了硕士的学习。嗯,我开始意识到我本科时期其实更加着重于传统的造型设计,技法以及手工制作。而进入硕士阶段时，我接受了更多观念性的教育。我受到教授们在学术方面的质问和考验，嗯，引发我对于使用粘土创作的审视。我思考了陶罐造型和其他元素的重要性。粘土是一种非常柔软可塑的材料，
and I've cut open an op uh, made an opening down here at the bottom that could be referenced to uh, sort of feet or legs or even a, a stand of some kind. But I viewed them at the time as almost alien-like creatures, but they were made in the same process that I enjoy the most, which is a thrown stack components that I've assembled together. And I coated these all in rubber, again, taking away that utility. So the, the pedestal and the forms themselves are all in a, in a black rubber. 作品的实用性我想知道实用性对我的作品的有着怎样的重要性这些作品的顶部没有任何开口因为我想创作只具有美观性而没有实用性的作品我不需要用它们来喝水或是赋予它们任何传统的功能左边的这幅作品中我拉
slip, uh, those sort of stacked and slipped and atmospheric fiery pots that you saw from my undergrad. That's what I, I felt the most excited to get in the studio and make. And so here are three pieces that I made during my time in North Dakota. This is sort of that elongated teapot form that you saw um, before. So I threw a, a taller, skinnier version of that. And it's hard to see in the image, but there is slip on this surface. Um, it is made of the same uh, stoneware that I threw with. And the, center, the piece in the center here was one of the first pieces that I had used porcelain slip on top of stoneware and then fired in the wood kiln. So another thing that you'll see that I've brought along with me from that graduate school experience was you saw that black, the black stoneware base forms. And so that's what I've done here. I've created a, 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 a house, sort of a home for this vase to set in. You can remove it from this um, uh, black clay base, but it will not stand up on its own. It needs that um, to stand up. And I just, I really like that engagement where I can pull this out, set it aside, and then, or I could put it back in here because it needs it to, um, to stand. And this piece on the right was uh, all porcelain except for these handles, which were uh, black stoneware. So the same as this black stoneware here, I made handles and attached it to the porcelain. And these are all fired in a wood kiln because, as you can see, the ash would collect on the surface and melt, and you can move along the slip lines. I liked, at the time, I really enjoyed having that extra layer and that extra um, sort of process to make these pieces stand out. Bait 中间的这幅作品也是拼接而成的我在主体部分添加了一个把手这一位置更高的温度时and um, I spent two years there developing um, classes and developing the program, but as far as my work, as you can see here, is concerned, these are, the, I think, the most important aspects of that time that I was there. And I show these, like you see here, these photos of freshly thrown assembled pieces, not fired and not finished purposefully. I, there was something about, I mean, I like the forms, I, 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 this is the first set of those jars in the forms themselves. You'll see this translate into the, the pieces that I make from now on. But the, the important part for me at the time was why I was so drawn to just the image of these without, um, without being, them being finished, seeing them in the black and white. Uh, I, it was the first time I, I noticed 
um, the pieces without that wood fired layered surface. And so I, um, but anyway, so in this, this, um, I altered the flared bowl form to almost give more lift to the body shape here to emphasize um, that center body section because I wanted to emphasize all this slip as well as these larger extended curled handles. And I will come back to, I'll reference this image later. 后来在田纳西，我花费了两年的时间开设了一个课程。嗯，在那时期，我创作了这些罐子的造型。在拍摄这些照片的时候，它们还是没有经过烧制的。我在主体部分和盖子上装饰了一些不对称的把手。我想用这些把手营造视觉上比较活泼的风格。作品经过柴烧后，表面效果会变得非常丰富。而我喜欢烧制前作品表面泥浆动态和光影的变化，这与柴烧后形成的颜色丰富的表面非常不同。当我意识到这些作品表面的光影效果时，嗯，我的创作生涯也发生了很大的转变。嗯，我在。From Tennessee, I moved to Indiana in 2013, and、uh, I didn't immediately have access to a atmospheric kiln or a wood-fired kiln. And so I had built, as you can see in this middle picture, I had built a little gas kiln using old broken electric kiln. And what I had done is I borrowed、um, a, a technique from、um, someone out in Utah. That you spray wood ash directly in the kiln, so I could fire this kiln in a, from from cold to cone ten in about seven hours, and in the middle of that process, I would spray this ash and allow it time to melt. But I could have a, a finished fired wood fired looking piece in about one day, which as you can see here on the left and on the right, where I didn't use any. Any glazes on the surface, but this teapot form here and these ewers on the left were examples that I pulled out of the kiln. 嗯，在二零一三年的时候，我移居到了印第安纳州，在这里我没有办法使用标准的柴烧装备，因此为了得到柴烧效果的表面，我发明了一种灰釉烧制技法。我使用气窑进行还原烧制。在向窑炉中撒入柴灰，用这种方法，我可以在七个小时内就得到传统柴烧的表面效果。通常呢，需要三天的时间。左边的这幅作品中，上釉的部分只有柴茶壶的流，我覆盖住其他的表面，在部分区域装饰了非常厚重的瓷泥浆。而右边的这只茶壶，整个表面都覆盖了茶，嗯，都覆盖了瓷泥浆。And these are a continuation of that same firing process, except they are、um, my vase vessel forms that you're used to seeing. So this one on the left was a much larger piece where I'd thrown a narrow foot, very wide, flared top, and then I threw two. Different cylinder sections to make that body, and you'll notice that I added this when I added the slip here. This is the natural、um, direction that the slip wants to fall, and so in this upper portion, you can see that I've attached it upside down so that, that slip comes upward as opposed to downward again. And I like this sort of mirror, mirror image of itself, so to speak, and how the the lip. Of this bowl form and the lip of this lid kind of frame out this center body section, as well as since it was since this was double stacked and I left that line so that you could see that it was two sections. I wanted to add、um, two layered handles as well, 
using my black stoneware again, as you can see. And this was fired in that ash kiln that I showed before. This piece in the center, um, I like to show this piece because you can see the direction in which I've sprayed the ash right here, straight into the kiln, and it collects it right here uh, and melted. And in this piece is uh, particularly important because it did crack in the firing process, but I used um, some gold leaf to fill in, uh, fill in that crack. I think it was me trying to still hold on to this base form, since I like it so much, in trying to add another um, element to the, to the piece. I don't know if it was super successful, but uh, you'll see where this leads um, to, to in my later pieces. And the image on the right here, the siblings piece, uh, for me, it was me. It was trying to use all the processes that I had done, right? So I've thrown these bowl base elevated forms. I've attached a body form. And then I added this larger overhung sort of umbrella form in order for the ash to collect. As you can see, it's collected all over the surface of this piece, melted and started to drip off the edges. Chisopinyanshuafonsa 上下两个圆柱体相反的方向拼接在一起，大家可以看到它们表面泥浆跌落的方向是相反的，与主体部分相同。它的把手也是由两部分拼接而成的，所有这些作品都没有上釉，陶土的主体部分上装饰了一些
，没有经过柴烧的作品，感觉好像失去了灵魂。嗯、呃，因此我在作品的表面装饰了一些花朵。第二天，当我走入工作室时，我对作品的看法发生了完全的转变，因为这些花给我作品的叙事风格带来了很大的变化。我很喜欢这些花朵的元素。右边的这些作品表面上上的是一层白釉，这些花朵以及纯白的釉料都与我之前的作品不同，因为纯色的釉料能够突出器形本身自然的美感。So with that, um. Uh, with with that uh, inspiration of the sort of solid white, this was my next iteration of my works. So similar to the jars that you saw before, you can kind of see how I was really.、Um, I said I would talk about the photographs of the jars that I made a few years prior. They were unfinished, and there was something that I was drawn to about them. And to me, it was. I took away all the, the very surface of ash and the browns and tans that come from a wood fire, and allowed the slip to play a larger role. Sort of the light and the shadow to be cast, and you can it, in itself it allows you to see and focus on the form and the, what the slip's doing. And so this piece, this jar on the right here, I did fire in a salt kiln, but it was. Much、uh, it was oxidized, and it was not.、Um, it wasn't very heavily reduced, and so it was a bit washed out. And at the time that I made it, I didn't really like it. And as an experiment, because I was, I sort of started to do a little bit of gold, as you saw on that one base. I decided to gold luster all the handles, and for me, this really、um, brought a new level, a new. Uh, exciting component to my work, and I kept talking about wanting to elevate my work, and I, I felt like this was that next step to elevate the pieces. And the same went for my my teapot series, where I'm keeping、uh, sort of a minimal glaze, like I used a black glaze here, and then gold lustered the handles. And this piece on the left was fired similar to the jar over here. It was fired to、uh, cone six oxidation in a salt kiln, and it was when I gold lustered the handles that that、um, for, for for me、um, it's let the piece feel more finished. Later, I gradually started to reduce the complex decoration of the work. For example, the red fire for the green glaze and the red wood floor. 嗯，图中的这些作品依然是用气窑烧制的。我不再使用柴烧，而是使用了盐烧，并且在氧化气氛中烧制。因此，烧制后的表面更具有光泽，而且更加白皙。这就好像之前那些未完成的作品，没有加修饰的单纯表面效果，突出了泥浆在光影下的层次感。我在手柄和把手等处装饰以金水，这为作品表面增加了亮点。而在左边的作品中，我用金水装饰的弯曲手柄来突出作品的下半部分。而茶壶中，我使用了金水装饰的流和手柄，制造了视觉上的焦点。右边的这幅作品刚好就在我的身后。他们弯曲的手柄为造型带来了更多的生机和活力。And this、um, gets to my most recent series of works, where I've gotten rid of the、um, atmosphere altogether. And this was one of the first pieces here on the left,、um, where I did a full cone six oxidation firing. So I've taken my shallow bowl form, and I've Thrown this and attached the body, similar to what you've seen、uh, in the jars before, except that I've lowered that、um, the, the base form, and then I added a coil at the top that I threw, as well as down here on the side, I added a coil, and I threw that off the side to add this overhung skirted section. 
Now, I, I, when I added those coils, I made sure that the coil was uneven, purposefully, because I wanted this to be slightly buried on the lip and this connection point. And the same goes for this, this sort of lower portion of the skirt. I like the movement that was created here in conjunction with the movement of uh, what my hand has done putting this, applying the slip. I also like the contrast that I created with this sort of matte, soft lusciousness that comes from an unglazed slip in contrast to the sharp, um, clean, sort of shiny white glaze here. Um, and with it being so low to the ground, I felt like with the shadow being cast, you can't see that foot. It almost looks like it's elevating or floating. And that's why I came up with that title, Floating Cloud, because of its sort of soft, movable uh, fluffiness. And the piece on the right here is that similar thrown shallow base. And then I have attached a body form and a much elongated tall neck. That piece is right here behind my shoulder too. Um, but I, I had glazed the entire body all the way around in a clear glaze because I knew I wanted this piece to be almost fully encompassed with gold luster. I wanted this slip to be uh, bright and shiny and I wanted it to, you know, I was trying to introduce something fresh and new. But I left this opening here of raw unglazed slip because I, again, I was expecting that sort of contrast between the shine and the, the, the uh, how, what gold kind of represents versus the raw porcelain slip. And with the elongated tall neck that I purposely wanted to keep the lip uneven like you've seen here, I knew if I kept that one solid color, it would kind of, it wouldn't feel um, complete. And so I used this oil spotted um, black glaze that I applied in different varied thicknesses because I wanted this different texture and different color variation on the neck. Tudonajinung 而中间的这些没有上釉的在电窑中露出了其中泥浆装饰的部分泥浆装饰的区域没有上釉其余部分装饰的是金水金水装饰区域上的釉料与左边这幅作品中上的釉料是一样的 so this leads to um, the pieces that I made for the um, for the masterclass video. Can you see this, Lisa? No. What's that? No, I can't see that. You cannot see it. Mm -hmm. I thought I was. Let me try this again. Hmm. 
You know, something happened here. Sorry about that. Can you see that? I can see your screen, but I can't see the video. Uh, you can see the piece, though? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, because I was having issues with mine. So this this piece here was um, the piece that I made. Um, the piece that I, the one of the pieces of the two that I made in the Masterclass series. And you can see me make this from start to beginning in that video. And it's, it's a very simple process in my opinion. And I think you will find it simple too, because I'm, I'm, I'm throwing things, um, I'm throwing and assembling. It's that, that process that I'm mostly drawn to. I like that I could throw a varied, uh, a varied uh, different components that I can assemble and they don't all have to connect perfectly because I like the somewhat imperfections that happen. So I've thrown this base, like, you, like I've talked about before, I've attached this thrown body, and then I added that thick slip. This time I didn't use porcelain slip, I used um, this groggy stoneware slip. I wanted it to be more earth or sand or stone-like. And on the image on the right, you can see the texture that it's created. Because I knew um, that I was gonna glaze the inside, this lip, and this skirt. I knew I was going to glaze those in a, in a bright white glaze. I'm always thinking about playing those contrasts off of each other. And then when I, um, like always, if you've seen the past few pieces, I add these bent curled um, handles that one is askew from the other. I like that they are different, very um, sizes. Again, it sort of adds to that idea of movement, almost like it's dancing or spinning. Um, because I like um, trying to make a pot move. I在线上大师班中创作了两幅作品,而这是其中一幅。在这幅作品中,我拉制了底部的裙边,主体部分和口沿,并将它们拼接在一起。主体部分装饰了沙土质感的哑光泥浆正好与泥浆表面起伏的曲线相呼应而未上釉的表面装饰金水后是哑光的 This is the other piece that I make um, in that video series called Black Pearl and um, I, I wanted to show both very uh, uh, both pieces because um, I wanted to show that you could do multiple things with this same process so with this piece, similar to a piece that I've shown before, actually with the piece that's just over my shoulder here, I've thrown a shallow bowl base form, and then I've attached this body. I've thrown a tall, um, elongated neck form, and I assembled those together. And this neck wasn't quite tall enough, so I've added a coil or two and pulled the neck even taller. I was actually trying to make it a bit more uneven. I wanted it to be have a little bit off kilter top, but it didn't quite get there, but that's okay. And I added this coil at the bottom because I wanted to bring that uh, the body of a skirted piece, that overhung piece, 
closer to the ground to give that sharp, clean shadow. Again, um, almost lending itself to feeling like it's, it's floating. And with this piece, um, unlike the pieces that you've seen before, I didn't want to put slip over the entire form, the entire body. And so kind of like what I've done on this piece behind me, um, in a piece that you've seen before where I've, I've lustered around and created a, the visual idea of a curtain being opened or a window or something, that's kind of what I was thinking here with this addition. So I've masked off the area and I added a black stained slip to give this piece a sort of front and back. And then I added white gold instead of the yellow gold, thinking about the white and the black slip in conjunction with the white gold. And originally I wanted this piece to be solid white, but I felt it was like there was something missing. It, it just was one of those intuitive things that happened when I pulled it out of the kiln where I felt it needed something more. And so what I did was I covered the whole piece in a pearl luster, which I hope you can see in the image. It almost looks like oil on water. You can see the purples and greens that are floating across the surface.原柱体的口沿部分我创作了三个系列的作品就像水面泛起的涟漪或是海面上细细的波澜当时我觉得纯白的幼米有些单调，因此我又添加了这一层金水。I finally want to um, sort of the last pieces that I want to show you all are these two uh, pieces. It's another series of works that I create in my studio. We tend to work on about three or four different theories of vessels in my studio at one time at varied times. And so I just wanted to show a, another um, version of my stacked and slipped pieces. And so the past few years I've been making these thrown, I throw them in halves and I connect them to make one piece. I could make these in one piece like most, like some other people, but I, again, I think it comes down to me enjoying that process of throwing and assembling. And what I'm doing instead of, um, sort of masking off a section uh, to, to isolate just the slip. I've masked off a section of the piece with paper, and then I've slipped over the entire form and peeled back that paper to create this opening. And both of these forms, the upper and the lower, done in the same way, where I'm trying to get to create a mirror or window reference sort of a, a, a window into the piece. And this upper one was fired in a soda kiln very uh, with very light soda. Up at the top, you can see it's got a little bit of a shine, but otherwise it is unglazed. And the piece at the bottom is unglazed porcelain slip on top of the form with this masked off area 
the Jeep, uh, the fully gold lustered, as well as the interior is gold lustered, so that you can see um, sort of the idea that you could see through and inside this piece, like the luster is exploding out from behind this porcelain slip. Uh, I created several series of paintings, and this is another series of paintings. In the previous series, I painted other paintings in the same way. In the painting of the painting, I 在其他部分涂是泥浆，金水部分、金水装饰的部分前后相对，就好像刚好能穿透瓶子本身。这幅作品在气窑中烧制，泥浆的上半部分表面是光泽的，但是底部的泥浆是哑光的，因为我在表面撒了一些苏打，而只有上半部分的表面吸附了苏打，形成了釉面。作品的重点是金水装饰的部分，像是一面镜子，你能从中看到自己的倒影。下方的作品也是如此，它是在电窑中用六号追温烧制出来的。泥浆的部分没有上釉，看上去像是，看上去既像是泥浆覆盖在金水表面，又像是金水表面嵌在泥浆。And with that, I I want to thank everyone for coming and thank the Tashi Chuan Art Center and Xin Ying and and Lisa and Ming.、Um, I just want to thank everybody for this opportunity. And、um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. 感谢大家新呃收听今晚的讲座。呃，我想，如果大家有任何问题。我非常荣幸为大家解答。嗯、呃，现在进入观众提问环节。如果大家有问题想问艺术家的话，请将问题打在公屏上，我们将随机选取四到五个问题，请艺术家解答。现在，请大家将问题打在公屏上。Thank you for this wonderful speech, Professor. Now it's time for our audiences to ask you some questions. We're going to select four to five of them for you to answer. Perfect. Do you,、uh, Lisa? Do you want me to unshare my screen now or leave this up? Uh, you can unshare your screen now. Thank you. Okay. That work? Yes. Okay. Um. So the first question is from Lei Jing. Uh, he asked that, uh, with different materials like the clay body and the slip, how would you connect this? How would you connect these different materials better, and file them more naturally? And what is the temperature of the cone eight?、Um, the、uh, what I have found in order for me to connect the the thick slip porcelain slip to the、uh, stoneware body. You know what he's asking about is is how I'm getting the different clay bodies, the structures to stay、um, uh, structurally sound. And as long as I'm using a clay or slip in this that that fire to the same temperature range, and、um, what I found is as long as I time the drying、uh, just right. So if I apply the slip. On、um, wet enough, like if I apply the slip on the the thrown piece while the piece is still wet, and then I time out the drying. I typically like to 
quickly uh, leave my piece open overnight so it sort of quickly dries and then I cover it up for a day. Uh, I don't have any issues with connectivity or cracking. Um, I, that seems to work for me. I think everyone would need to just sort of practice and find what works in their studio. But it has to do with timing and making sure that you fire your, your connecting clays that, that, that uh, fire to a similar temperature. And a cone, um, I don't know what, so I, I fire mostly to cone six now. Yes. Um, does he want to know in Fahrenheit or Celsius? I mean, uh, I think they mean Celsius. Okay, I'm going to have to Google it because I can't remember offhand. Mm -hmm. But I think it's... Uh, uh, means that it maybe. was... It is uh, 1,220 Celsius degree. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to ask, you fast dry it uh, during 24 hours. Uh, do, you, do you dry it in, in a kiln or you dry it naturally? No, it, it, again, it comes down to... Because, you know, Jing Zhen can be very humid in the summertime, in the fall, and be really, really humid and wet outside. So it's going to vary from place to place. So in my personal studio, I will, I will add the slip, and let it set out, depending on how dry it is or wet it is outside. I will um, let it just set open in my studio for eight to 20 hours, depending on Again, it, like you said, depending on um, how wet or dry it is. And then I'll cover it with plastic after that. I don't force dry it in a kiln because that would be, it would be too much. Okay. At least for my own practice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, 第一个问题是来自雷静的. Uh, 他问的是, 您好, 请问, 佩吉与泥江... 在材料不同时如何能更好的连接您烧制的八号追温是多少温度 通常我会将泥浆涂饰在陶泥表面我通常会将泥浆上在非常湿润的表面气候不同 Um, so the second question is from Lao Mao. Uh, she asked that, uh, would you share with us your experiences in making the slip? Sure, yeah. I, um, let's see. It depends on the type of slip that you're making. Um, 
I, oh man, depends on the type of slit. So if you're using a, uh, I like know what Gina, Gina does. Um, what's that? In gold, is that, is that right? I, I don't know. Oh, the, the slip would be the, 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 the thick. Are they wanting to know about my gold luster or about the thick, uh, the surface texture? Yeah, the, I think they just mean slip. Yeah, the slip, okay. So I like to start with a porcelain clay body. Mm -hmm. I, I do not put a, uh, I don't want to put any kind of um, flux or, or, or what's the word I'm looking for. My brain is not working very well today, but essentially start with a, a basic porcelain clay. And I actually like to make it into a workable clay. And then I pinch off chunks of that clay into a bucket. Mm -hmm. And then once I, I, I soak that those clay chunks down in water, and then I dump the water off, and I blend it up until I can get the thickness that I like. So I try not to let it get too thin. If it's too thin, it, um, it, it will, even though when you apply it, it will uh, sort of shallow itself out. It'll be a little, a little smoother than uh, um, that I like. I tend to like my slip to be very, very thick. Um, and so I can get that really high uh, relief, textured relief. And it, again, a lot of it's going to come down to just practice in the studio and figuring out the thickness that you like to work with. But I, again, I always tend to start with, generally start with a porcelain uh, slip. But this piece behind me is uh, that you saw in the images is a groggy stoneware and the stoneware slip tends to stick easier to uh, easier to the surfaces because it has uh, a much larger varied um, granular structure molecular structure and so it it doesn't quite shrink as tight as porcelain and so it adheres to pots easier but again I, I I like the smoothness generally that happens from porcelain. Um, okay. Thanks. And I, I talk a little bit. I talk a little bit about that in the video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, 第二个问题是来自老猫的。嗯，他问到老师您好，请问您在制作化妆土上有什么经验吗？谢谢。嗯，对此 ，Gambling 的回答是。嗯、呃，通常呢，我会使用瓷泥、瓷土进行嗯、呃、化妆土的制作。我不，我不太习惯于使用溶剂。嗯、呃，我通常会将泥料嗯、呃、撕成比较小的小块，然后放入一个桶里，再注入水，嗯、呃，让它自然的降解。嗯、呃。稀释成我想要的浓度。我不是很喜欢流动性太强的泥，呃，泥浆，也就是化妆土。嗯、呃，我比较喜欢偏厚的，嗯、呃，泥浆，因为我觉得，嗯、呃，这种泥浆在表面装饰的时候会出现比较起伏的状态。我很喜欢这种起伏的感觉。嗯、呃。而我后面我身后的这幅作品用到了陶泥，陶泥的泥浆，嗯、呃，陶泥的泥浆相比于瓷泥来说更容易粘接在表面，但是我更加喜欢瓷泥制造的瓷泥浆制造出的那种细腻的纹理。So the third question is from Ming. He asked that you have a lot of works that have the um, the base, and mm -hmm. the the base forms are very interesting, I think. And I want to ask, how do you design this base 
forms. Sure. Um, I'm assuming he's asking about the um, the pieces where I'm setting something on top of, and not necessarily talking about the base of the vase. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, with the the ladder type forms, it, it's somewhat intuitive in the design. Like, um, I'll take my black stoneware and I'll pound it out, stretch it out, trying to give a heavy texture to the surface. And I'll, I'll sort of cut lines, and but I won't go all the way through, and I'll peel away. Again, I'm trying to create textures and sharp lines in those forms. In the other black stoneware base forms, I will, uh, I'll take a solid lump of clay, and I'll take a wire tool, and I'll sort of cut down into it and peel away areas. I'm trying my best. Um, to touch the piece, those bases as little as possible, because I want that natural torn uh, clay effect, as if it just occurred. And I'm afraid if I touch it too much or smear it too much, it will look forced. And so, with the black clay stoneware base, like um, sort of in, when I was in North Dakota, that base that sat down into that base form, that was the way I did that. And when it dried um, enough to touch it. I turned it upside down and I carved out. So really it was getting that surface to where I, the way I want it to look. And then I hollowed out the form so it would be lighter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The second question is from you. He asked if you have a lot of different pieces. 这些底座的形式很有趣，请问您是怎么去设计的呢？嗯、um, ，对此 ，Gambling 的回答是，在我的很多作品当中，我会使用黑色陶泥设计出一些底座，然后将作品放置在上面。呃、uh, ，我有有些时候我会使用切割的技法，我会切割出一些比较锋利的纹理。嗯、呃，有些时候呢，我会呃取一大块黑色的陶泥，然后在它的侧面撕裂，嗯、呃，产生一些比较自然的纹理。在制作出这些纹理的过程中，我会尽量少的用手去接触它们，因为我不想在陶泥的表面留下我手的痕迹。我想制作出。看上去像是自然形成，或是，嗯，因为某些事物的撞击留下来的纹理。嗯、呃，我是用这些手法来创作出我想要的表面纹理和形状的。So the last question is from Sing Ho. She asked, "Would you use reduction firing with glaze again that you started in your early development? How would you reconcile with your current style?" Mm. I am always open to, you know, uh, doing most things. I, I, I uh, so yes, I think I would most definitely do a cone tin reduction firing. If um, if that's where I'm going next, or I will give it a shot, and I think I could do that. Um, think I could do that in a very similar way. So firing a cone six electric, partially because of its convenience and ease, because I'm so busy uh, running the running the uh, um, ceramics area here at IU, managing the facilities and doing everything else. So I. I um, Part of it is ease, but I also really like that clean, um, oxidized surface look. And I think I could do a very similar effect in reduction firing. You know, because you can get beautiful surfaces in a in a reduction firing as well. And I would, depending on depending on how the slip would turn out in a reduction firing, if it turned 
more orange or golden or, or if it got slightly altered, I think I'd just have to maybe experience that in a heavy reduced atmosphere. But I could most certainly see my forms bringing more of that color back. Because I really like, I mean, I think that's what this gold is. The gold is me trying to bring more color and vibrance back because I really enjoy color. Another series of works that I've been working or making are tumblers where I um, stain my slips in a variety of colors, yellows, purples, oranges, reds, because I really enjoy that uh, brilliant color. And so I could see these vessels starting to adapt that way with, with bright colors again. Mm. Uh, sorry, did you say that you use uh, reduction firing in in firing those different colors? No, I I I, I did use reduction firing early on mm -hmm. um, in those the cone tin reduction when I was doing copper reds and ash glazes. And I've done a, uh, lots of reduction firing throughout my career. Um, but I think Sunim was asking about that type of surface. How would I sort of reconcile and would I be up for uh, bringing some of that back or how would I do that now that I've, you know, tried a bunch of other new things. So, and I was just saying that, so these are all not, but I could see, um, bringing some of that color with reduction firing okay. in these forms. Okay. 您现在还会使用您早期使用的还原烧制技法吗? 您是如何将以前的这种还原技法、还原烧制技法与现在的风格相结合的? 对此Gambling的回答是 我一直都保持了一种非常开放的心态 早期的作品当中我会使用十号追温进行还原烧制 当时我使用了很多铜红釉我会选择不同的烧制技法感谢大家参与今晚的线上讲座 Thank you, Professor, for sharing your works and stories with us. We are really impressed. Thanks everybody for your attention, thanks for coming, and I hope you all enjoyed our lecture today. Next week we will have another online lecture held by Finnish artist Tapio. Hope to see you there.